Hi, I'm John Malice. Welcome to this special take program here on MeTV Fresno. Connect with me on the showroom floor at Ventura TV on this Wednesday morning. Sorry, no phone calls. You can still call in at 436 MeTV Option 11 and leave a message for our staff. We're talking about comedy today. We're back after this word. Well, it's our sponsor today, McHenry Protective Services. We're back in a moment. Welcome back to the program, a special taped edition of Connect With Me on MeTV Fresno. No phone calls on this day, but you can leave a message with our staff, as I said, 436 MeTV Option 11. Hope you had a great holiday weekend. Hard to believe that 2017 is just around the corner, just a few days away as we tape this program. And a quick programming note, uh, this program taped on uh, to show on Wednesday the 28th. Well, tomorrow the 29th. Becky Cinema is going to be here live. We're back live tomorrow with her to review some of the movies that are out right now in the theaters. Then on Friday, Peter Nazaridian is going to be here to tell us about the holiday blues and how people get down in the dumps this time of year. He's our resident family therapist, so that's what's coming up here in the next couple of days. In the meantime, you're watching us live on Comcast or on tape on Comcast Channel 375, as usual. If you do not have Xfinity cable, it's not a problem because you can purchase an over-the-air broadcast a digital antenna right here at Ventura TV and catch us on 43.6 and 13.1. Later in the day, two more appearances here on MeTV. Uh, let's see, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, 13.6 U2 actually, 8 o'clock tonight, 4.6 Biz, Biz TV. But it's all part of the Ventura Broadcasting family. So MeTV, U2, and Biz uh, TV all part of Ventura Broadcasting, and you can catch us three times in one day. One, a live appearance, 10 to 11, except for today, and then two more times at 2 o'clock and 8 o'clock, and on YouTube after that forever. Today we're talking about comedy. Now let me ask you something, my friends. When you think of comedy or comedians, who really makes you laugh? Who makes you fall onto the floor, out of your seat, uh, rolling over for minutes on end, gut-wrenching laughter. Would it be, I don't know, Jerry Seinfeld? Some people don't even think he's funny. Can you believe that? How about Johnny Carson since past? Bob Hope has since past. How about a more modern-day guy like a Chris Rock who's been on Saturday Night Live and hosted Saturday Night Live many times? Or maybe two more that have passed on. Hey, Robin Williams and George Carlin, two of the best. When you look to Fresno and you're looking for comedy, on January the 21st, that's not all that far away, maybe uh, three weeks plus, you can go to Punchlines and Pasta Cafe via Herndon and Blackstone. They have booked comedians for your entertainment. One of those booked comedians is Tim Cuckenbaker. Uh, check his act out here uh, at Cafe Via at Herndon and Blackstone recently. You know that there's 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 some people out there that um, would justify my people as I don't know you could say cheap maybe I come from a faraway land uh, like in the Middle East area but not the kind of Middle East that'll blow up this building I promise it's not that kind of, no 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 I love God so I'll promise you that no and I I have nothing on my body there's no there's no bombs there's no straps. Because I can't afford them because I'm that kind of a cheap guy. I come from the great land of Armenia. Yeah, whoa. She's had a shish kebab in her mouth before. That's right. That's right. She's played with some uh, gyro sandwiches in her time. And uh, you like the taste of hummus. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. We know. We know. She got excited. Those, those of you that have uh, been to places like, I don't know, broilers, it's kind of like our McDonald's of, of Middle Eastern food. You can go in quick, get out quick. You don't know what you're getting. It tastes somewhat ethnic. Okay. So I come from that really small country, right? And for those of you that don't know where Armenia is located, let me help you. We're right next to Turkey, to the right. We're not too far away from Russia. We're butted up against uh, Azerbaijan and Georgia and Iran. So essentially, we're landlocked. We can't swim to a better country. <laughs> Mexican people. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I got some people saying, that's 
a Mexican joke. What? All right. All right. I got one tonight. All right, uh, live in our studio, or should I say taped in our studio right now, is Tim Cuckenbaker. He is a local comedian. How often does he do this? Full-time, part-time? Where can we see him and other comedians that uh, are booked for these shows? We'll talk about that during the course of the program. Can't call in today live. You can call in and leave a message at 436-MeTV, option 11. This is a special tape program, of course, on MeTV Fresno. And our sponsor today is uh, McHenry Protective Services. We're back in just a moment. It's no wonder why the city of Fresno and so many Valley businesses choose McHenry Protective and Investigative Services. With over 50 years of experience in public safety and security, McHenry's team of experts will safeguard you, your commercial property, and your next big event. Professional service, marked patrol vehicles, 24-hour dispatch, and friendly, observant, and responsive armed and unarmed guards are just a few of the reasons you should contact McHenry at 559-478-7747 or visit them online at McHenryProtection.com. And away we go. Here's the place that makes you smile. Stick around and stay a while. We're the home of great TV. That's memorable. That's, That's me. Follow me, sir. Call them classics. Call them the best. Call them favorites. Be a guest. Every day there's more to come. Watch and see. There's only one. Me TV. All you have to do is watch me. Are you kidding me? Follow me. That's memorable. That's me. That's me. Me, me, me. Oh. Me TV. Back here on the program, a special taped edition of Connect With Me on MeTV Fresno, talking about comedy today, and Tim Cuckenbaker is here. We saw him in the monologue there just a little bit. How are you? Good Hi. morning. How are you? How good, are you? good, good, good. I'm, I'm excited to be here, finally, finally. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's good to be with you. Oh, well, it's good to be with you, too. So, uh, in the monologue, you mentioned you are from Armenia. Well, uh, I guess you would say my ethnicity comes from that side okay, I'm, I'm born, born here. here yeah as a matter of fact but you weren't born over there no no I wasn't okay. no I wasn't I was I was born uh, actually right down the street at uh, Fresno Community Hospital so I'm okay. I'm really born and okay, raised but your right ancestors here. come from yes there. Mm -hmm. okay and so do you crack jokes about Armenians all the time yeah yeah, yeah it's it's you I think of it as if you can uh, make fun of someone else you got to be able to make fun of yourself as well so it's all fair game on the microphone uh you know and and with that um i definitely uh kind of like to let people laugh at me instead of always just with me right yeah. and so tell us about this uh event that's coming up punchlines and pasta cafe via on the 21st of january this is not the first time this event has been held here you, you book comedians they right. come in Tell us more about it. Yeah, um, definitely, and definitely. How this got started. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, uh, well, Cafe Via is a, a local uh, Italian restaurant here in town, and uh, the owners are uh, local. Uh, the Babcock family that owns uh, that restaurant, and uh, we, myself, and a partner of mine that we coordinate the show with, um, Olivia Malekos, out of Northern California, up in the Stockton area. Uh, myself and her uh, went ahead and contacted them and bringing forward. Uh, our dinner shows, kind of an old-fashioned way of uh, running a good comedy show where you have the uh, ability to buy dinner, be entertained while you're eating, um, and and kind of keep it nice and intimate. Um, sometimes some people in the music industry call it like an unplugged set where, you know, it's just a one performer in, in such a smaller setting. Uh, for the crowd to get to know them better. And that's what we are aiming for. We have a nice uh, privatized room there that uh, we do sell advanced tickets to. And uh, we will definitely bring some buy out to your studio for uh, those and your viewers and listeners to enjoy uh, the ability to come on out in Does not only in January. Does it cost any additional money because there's the entertainment there? Uh, well, no, it's just a, a flat fee on our ticket prices. We keep them at ten dollars uh, each and every but month. But to eat dinner there and take in the show is a little right. It's it, it's optional. It, optional. There's you don't no have to. yeah. Not like Los Angeles and other parts of uh, it's not California. Mandatory to eat exactly. Dinner. Okay. No, okay. So that's no. the big difference. Okay. Right. So is this kind of like the old style? Back in the 50s and 60s when they had the Copacabana in New York? Yes, we are, are honestly going for that approach where um, you may have the comedian come and sit right on your lap during a set and tell a joke or, or stand up on your table and tell a joke. So very um, uh, in-your-face humor. Uh, there's no elevated distance stage. There's no uh, hands-off type of routine. It's, it's real... Uh, 
real uh, uh, casual uh, setting to, to make not only the audience feel comfortable, but make the performer, make the comedians that we bring to town feel comfortable. Because we're reaching out to comics that have been on TV already, that have been on radio, been in movie and film, and um, we're bringing them to Fresno. We are... Uh, reaching from as far north of San Francisco to as far south as even into Arizona already that have traveled in to right, perform. Let's, let's listen to one other comedian uh, who took part in a recent event at Via uh, Cafe Via over at Herndon Blackstone. His name is Terry Michaels. Oh, great. And, um, well, let's just roll the clip yeah, and see what good. he had to say. Did he make you, will he make you laugh? That's the question. You have to look and listen. Uh, I had a weird dream the other night. Uh, I had a dream that I was peeing in my bed. Oh, no. Yeah, you ever had a dream that I woke up and I was peeing in my bed? <laughs> you say dreams don't come true. Right? <laughs> uh, I got thrown out of a casino a while back because apparently you're not supposed to yell rape at the blackjack table <laughs> when you lose 500 bucks. I just, uh, that's kind of how it felt. I was just, you know. Actually, I was there playing bingo. I don't know if you guys ever go there. Uh, I was playing bingo, and uh, if you've never played bingo, I got a piece of advice for you. Don't yell bingo if you don't have it. <laughs> Those old people will kick your <laughs> All right, so that was Terry Michaels taking part in that event. Uh, Punchlines and pasta, yes. just a little bit about him. Uh, he sounded like a kind of a funny guy. We only short a short. You know, you can't gauge anything by showing a 40, 45 second clip. So it's true. Yeah, it goes quick. Does he, goes is quick. he a regular? Terry Michaels uh, out here in the Valley uh, is a regular, but he's been doing comedy for over 20 years, uh, performing all over from uh, the colleges in, in Washington to as far uh, south as into Texas. And so he really travels well um, and is just a fantastic uh, comedian. We've been able to uh, book Terry and bring him out uh, to Fresno on multiple occasions. We've had him in fundraisers uh, that we've done uh, for great uh, benefits and, and throughout the Valley. That's one thing uh, Olivia and I, uh, under the uh, production group, TKO Productions, we really aim towards uh, working with a variety of comedians for a variety of reasons, not just your everyday dinner show at Cafe Villa. It could be also for a nice benefit, uh, be it the uh, American Cancer Society or the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society we've done shows for. So we've uh, definitely brought some really talented individuals to So what, what, what is comedy in your opinion? Uh, comedy, you know, it's I, as I was telling uh, uh, others uh, earlier today, it's truly not always just going to be uh, what that funny story is maybe at the dinner table. It's it's going to be more than that. It's going to be someone who uh, can, can really make you laugh um, at any given time that maybe, you know, I've had friends that are not comedians cheer me up with their thoughts on a joke or their ways of just being funny in a manner where it's not always, oh, it's got to have a punchline. Oh, it's got to have a hit at the end. No, just someone's personality can be funny. Right. And that, to me, is genuine comedy. Yeah. yeah. Hey, okay, we're talking with Tim Cuckenbaker. He's a local comedian. By the way, how often do you do this? Are you a part-timer, a yeah, full-timer? Yeah, definitely a part-timer. Yeah, a part-timer. Yeah, yeah, definitely part-time at it. And yeah. these shows go on once a month. They do. They do. And you ha do you have different comedians across the board? Each and every in? month. Yeah, we always bring in a fresh lineup of comedians. Oh, so it's not going to be the same in January as it was in December. Absolutely no. No, it's not. The next no, event not. takes place at Cafe Via January 21st. If you are interested in going there to Punchlines and Pasta, more with Tim Cuckenbaker, a tape program here on Connect With Me on MeTV Fresno on this Wednesday morning. But you can call in and leave a message, 436-MeTV, option 11, back after a word from McHenry Protective Services. It's no wonder why the city of Fresno and so many Valley businesses choose McHenry Protective and Investigative Services. With over 50 years of experience in public safety and security, McHenry's team of experts will safeguard you, your commercial property, and your next big event. Professional service, marked patrol vehicles, 24-hour dispatch, and friendly, observant, and responsive armed and unarmed guards are just a few of the reasons you should contact McHenry at 559-478-7747 or visit them online at McHenryProtection.com. Tune in to Heartland for the best in true country music.
Relive vintage specials, one-of-a-kind concerts, and country music's earliest videos. Heartland is the heart of country. The only place where you can find country music, country stars, and country lifestyles 24-7. Heartland, the heart of country. Now on channel 13.2. Back here with Tim Cuckenbaker, uh, your favorite comedian. Of all time? Yeah. Uh, Jerry Seinfeld. I had the pleasure Seinfeld. of seeing him in Fresno last year um, and took my father, my late father, who uh, uh, recently passed away. But it was definitely a, a great birthday gift this past year to uh, be able to take uh, take my dad. So it was all a good right. time. So uh, that took place where? At Selland or at St. Mark's? Saroyan Theater, actually. Oh, was it Saroyan? Yeah. Packed house. Unbelievable you were performance. Up close? I was, uh, close. let's say, tenth row, middle. He, yeah. How funny is he? Because I hear a lot of people say, "Look, he is not that funny. His jokes just don't resonate." With um, me. honest to goodness, he was uh, funny from the beginning to the end, and he had no opening act. He did not need anyone else on stage but himself. There was nothing going on behind him. It was strictly one man show that what was, was his focus um well what was smart about him and and this is where some comedians succeed and fail especially when traveling is he did his research on fresno he made sure to come in about a day early and he went up and down from downtown fresno all the way to river park and all the way to even woodward park and other parts of the valley and really kind of uh was able to uh come up with brand new material about Fresno on stage on the given night that he performed. It was only a one one show, one night appearance. And boy, I, I can honestly tell you if he does come back. What did he say about Fresno? I'm curious. Uh, I think I want to say um, one in particular area was he uh, that he got the whole crowd behind him uh, of all mixed stages, all mixed uh, backgrounds and dynamics that were sitting there and sold out watching him. He definitely, as soon as he said the words, well, I, I know, where to, know where to find a taco at, and he announced, just need to announce the name Tacos Tijuana, and the place erupted in claps and laughter, and oh yeah, oh yeah, I've been there. And it was, it, was, it was awesome. It was just awesome to see him. But that's not a joke. He's not telling a joke. Well, uh, he, he went on to say, uh, I guess you would say, uh, with that, uh, if I can remember correctly, it was about... Um, it was great going down, but really burning going, uh, you know, yeah. going out the other way. And so, so it was, you know, trying to be as, trying as to be funny. Yeah, trying to be as clean here on your set as possible. Then. Anybody else come to me? What do you think of Chris Rock, George Wallace? George I like Chris Carlin? Rock. Yeah, I like Chris Rock. Uh, I, I did not follow George Carlin as much growing up, but Chris Rock in this contemporary day and age, and of course, people like Kevin Harder, uh, uh, popular as you well as George Wallace. Uh, George Wallace, I want to say once or twice, but I don't follow him as much on. But you know who he is. Yeah, yeah, you know who he is. Yeah. I want to play a clip of yeah. George Wallace. Okay, and uh, for the the younger generation watching out there, they have no idea who this guy is. They have no idea who uh, Carlin is either. But George Wallace, take a listen to this guy. Question. Where y'all come up with all these new diseases y'all got? <laughs> Young people got new, they got acid reflux and compulsive shopping, compulsive shopping. You're a thief, that's what you are. <laughs> Tell them, baby boomers, we grew up, yeah, you know, only we grew up, we had three diseases, didn't we? We had the measles, the mumps, and the chicken pox. That's all we could afford. <laughs> now you got the new, they got another disease called ADD. Y'all heard about that one? Tell these young kids we grew up, ADD ain't nothing a good ass whooping couldn't cure. <laughs> ADD, these are just cold letters that the doctor came up with. The doctor couldn't come around and say, Miss Brown, your child's a fool. Because <laughs> that wouldn't be good for business. Any doctors in here? Any doctors in here? Two, three doctors back there? Everybody working in the medical industry, raise your hands. All of you need your ass kicked. <laughs> Everybody here want to know, doctor, why do we have a 10 o'clock appointment to see you doctors? We don't get to see the 11, 15, 11, 30, 11, 45. <laughs> Then they walk out and ask you, what's the problem? The problem I've been waiting on your ass for an hour and a half. <laughs> then they walk by you, be patient, be patient. That's how they came up with the name. 
Everybody in the medical, even people work at the drugstore. Had to go in the drugstore yesterday and get some, my foot is hurting, had to get some Dr. Shaw products, and they got it all the way in the back of the store. Put that stuff up at the front of the store with the pens and condoms, and, and people need KY jelly. People in a hurry, got to go. Yeah, so George Wallace, I grew up uh, listening to him, watching him on uh, The Tonight Show. Of yeah. course, that's where he made his, I think, his big-time debut, yeah. as a lot of comedians did. And uh, so, so what's the secret for each comedian? Do, 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 is there a common thread uh, between the great ones, uh, like a Seinfeld that you think he's, he's great, Johnny Carson, Bob Hope, George Wallace, George Carlin, Chris Rock? Is there a common denominator? Well, on on the bigger names like you brought up on on Carlin and 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 Johnny Carson and Jay Leno and so forth, those that have been blessed and and had the great opportunity of having a, a great night show or talk show or anything that's consistent, uh, movies and and maybe a television series, um, I would definitely have to say when they're doing stand up like like you're showing clips of today, uh, away from their own shows that they've been casting uh it definitely is the most successful ones i've seen is is going to be in the storytelling and and today uh as you get the opportunity to interview other comedians that are here today yeah. with us you'll you'll hear that as well in in their abilities and their success in storytelling that leads to a lot of great humor maybe it's not every sentence is funny maybe it's at the end uh as you would say closing off the story or getting to the punchline or whatever it may be or a callback to the beginning of a story that's funny it, it really does uh show the professionalism on their part to be able to hold an audience's uh attention like that yeah yeah interesting so so the the key common denominator the common thread is to hold the audience and how do you do that it it really to me you know being a fan of comedy long before i ever even took upon holding a microphone in my hand uh watching it and watching it and going to shows live or watching on tv um i would definitely say uh, it it really is in presentation. It's 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 maybe something they're wearing, something maybe the, the sound of their voice or an accent they use or a um, impersonation they may use. So if if the storytelling is going wrong, but they just have that ability to lock in with the audience, and um, like I was mentioning with Jerry Seinfeld, being able to uh, arrive into a town, kind of have a little bit of know how, know about you know knowledge about where he's at. Um, or she, as well as the female communion, is doing a great job of that, is just uh, fantastic. And they'll always win over the crowd, and the crowds will always come back. Speaking of female comedians, who comes to mind? Right off the bat, uh, that is very successful to this day, Ellen DeGeneres. Yeah. Yeah, very she successful. She is funny. Mm -hmm. She is funny. She's very talented, yes. very entertaining. She's a talk show host, but yes. a comedian. Yes. Uh, much like Jay Leno yes. was much like many of the talk show yeah. hosts uh, that are that are out there now, the comedians, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, like Jimmy Kimmel. Jimmy Kimmel's very, very good. And he yeah. started off even with just normal TV show that wasn't, he wasn't known for his stand-up comedy right. as well as his other appearances. But other than yeah. Ellen DeGeneres, who hosted the Oscars, uh -huh. by the way, and yes. was very funny. She That's ordered, a huge honor. Did she honor. order pizza? She did. She did. She, did. she took a selfie with a lot of people. Yeah. And it was an Armenian guy that actually del delivered the pizza. That, that was, was even, that was, okay. that was, right. he, he so, got so, quite popular. Yeah. So <laughs> anyway, uh, anybody, place. any other females come to mind? Um, also, Kathy Griffin, uh, the redhead, the yeah. ginger comedian, yeah, 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 uh, you yeah, yeah, know, yeah, that, Kathy Griffin. Yeah, she's, she's very popular, very successful. Um, and then, uh, and then I even go back further to uh, the late Joan Rivers that uh, passed yeah. away yeah. and yeah. Um, those that have come before our time. Um, I think we still have Lily Tomlin living uh, to this day and yeah. she's very successful and was successful at being a very humorous uh, actress comedian comedian uh, actress so uh, those that take it from the stage and take it from the microphone yeah. and uh, and are able to be seen elsewhere yeah, I think is just Kathy crazy. Griffin if if I'm not mistaken she's gonna be hosting uh, New Year's Eve with uh, Anderson she, Cooper yeah I yep. believe on that's CNN. That's like her second or third year now. Second yeah, or third yeah, year, yeah. yeah, I think so. Very successful. So, yeah, she's. <laughs> yeah, she is. All right, we're with Tim Cuckenbaker. He's a local comedian himself, and he is going to be appearing on January 21st. First, Cafe Via Punchlines and Pasta. It's a kind of a dinner show. If you want to eat dinner, fine. If you don't, it's okay. Taking the show with the book comedians they have on hand.
436 me tv option 11 if you want to leave a message no live call in it's a tape program as i said so today's program sponsored by mchenry protective services it's no wonder why the city of Fresno and so many Valley businesses choose McHenry Protective and Investigative Services. With over 50 years of experience in public safety and security, McHenry's team of experts will safeguard you, your commercial property, and your next big event. Professional service, marked patrol vehicles, 24-hour dispatch, and friendly, observant, and responsive armed and unarmed guards are just a few of the reasons you should contact McHenry at 559-478-7747 or visit them online at McHenryProtection.com. Explore strange new worlds on MeTV. Seek out new life. I've seen old photographs of this period. Let's get out of here. And new civilizations. Only go to Mayberry and the Andy Griffith Show. Weeknights at 8 on MeTV Fresno. Is a long drive. <laughs> if, if you call up one of your friends, hey man, I need you to pick me up. Where you at? About 26 miles away. <laughs> you better get Uber. <laughs> 26 miles. People jogging for 26 miles, man. 26. Their knees are hurting. Their feet are killing them. If you're a woman, there's blood coming out your titties. <laughs> Six miles. You've been training for a year. You finally get to the finish line and somebody screams, run! <laughs> Woo! That is horrible, man. But hey, the good people of Boston bounce back. That's right. And New York will bounce back. That's right. New York, we had our own terrorist attack. And we bounced back. That's right. Now we got the Freedom Tower. The Freedom, have you seen the Freedom Tower? You can see it no matter where you're at. If, if, you can't, if, you, if you can't see it from here, then you're in Connecticut, okay? <laughs> Freedom Tower, anywhere you look. Now, they should change the name from the Freedom Tower to the Never Going In There Tower. Because <laughs> I'm never going in there. There is no circumstance that will ever get me in that building. Are you kidding me? All right, the one and only Chris Rock, only he knows how to do it. I'll tell you what, he was a great uh, comedian hosting Saturday Night Live, one of the few times, uh, Tim, that I heard Chris Rock keep it clean. <laughs> Usually he's on cable and right. it kind of gets out of control there. Yes. But he is, has his own style. Yes. And what is that style, do you think? Um, you know, it's funny that you said about keeping it clean and, and, and being able to appear on Saturday Night Live. And, and he's yeah. hosted many a times, so obviously the, the success follows him. But also, like you were mentioning, the reputation follows some comedians like that who tend to get booked on larger uh, cable networks that, quote-unquote, have the ability to go a little blue, go a little dirty, go a little R-rated. And so... Um, it is nice to see a comedian that has that background finally appear on a maybe a primetime channel or or a local you well, know it's a, a major broadcast network yeah, which you can't yeah. use any foul language Correct. in a major broadcast setting like yes. that so NBC ABC CBS maybe cable like CNN you can get away with a little right. more right HBO, HBO Cinemax HBO, yep but, Showtime you know, the broadcast networks they go into every home yes every home yes and even even Comcast, excuse me, um, Comedy Central, uh, known as the channel for watching stand-up comedy, cable. they keep it uh, relatively clean enough up until about, I guess you'd say midnight hour or after dark hour, and they get away with a little bit of blue humor, a little darker, a little R-rated after the so-called uh, uh, curfew they like to say. And I even sometimes announce in our shows when when it gets past 10 o'clock, we know some comedians, yeah. even uh, well-trained and, and new ones as well, uh, may go a little dark, may go a little dirty. But we always try to announce that to crowds. Like, you know, it is all fun and games. It's all for the humor. So so, so this Punchlines and Pasta that's coming up on January 21st, yes. is, is this the only show of its kind in the Central Valley? Uh, not in the sense of the only show that's 
uh, inside of a restaurant. Now, there's been other shows throughout the Valley that uh, host in both restaurants, bars, nightclubs, um, even another show that I produce in downtown Fresno inside the Galleria building. Uh, we put on a show there each and every month under the title Comedy Night with a Tease, sponsored by Teasers. Okay. And that's an all-ages show, uh, as well as even our dinner show at uh, Cafe Via is all ages. We do always like to inform crowds uh, that are in environments where there is beer and wine sales and maybe alcohol sales that, you know, we understand that the crowd might get a little uh, ruckus at times or maybe want to have a little fun with um, what we call... Uh, in the business heckling a comedian okay. well it's all fair game the comedian has the ability Your to guys heckle get back. heckled over there do they oh sometimes? you know you you play with the crowd yeah it's it's improv at, at times yeah you can uh kind of go off the cuff of your sleeve and and a real good comedian should be able to do that they should be able to know their own material know their set but then also change in a matter Did of they seconds heckle he uh, seinfeld uh on uh inside the sorian theater they they did like call outs like they they want to hear material from his show or they want to um you know they and they kind of did he maybe, respond they and he did and he did he, and he did. took well with it he took very <laughs> he didn't he didn't get nervous and he didn't uh, try to shush the crowd down or try to calm them down in any way because it was it was um it was, it was a loose format. Yeah, it was nice. Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty, boy, yeah. I wonder what he got paid for that. Yeah. Wow. It was very nice. Hey, I want to bring on a couple of more guests here uh, that take place in this Punchlines and Pasta. Uh, and they will, I guess they will be yeah, there, Yeah, because right? it's like they a monthly be series. They'll the be coming I'm out. The two I'm bringing on next, they're, they're going to be there on the 21st? Well, it, not in January per se, because we have a, a book lineup for that. But oh, they'll be okay. coming out in our February, March, or April shows. Yeah. Okay, but they're, they've been on that on that program before. There are newest comedians coming in 2017. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, we'll talk to him here on the other side of the break. You're watching Connect With Me on MeTV Fresno. Time to take another short break. 436 MeTV Option 11 if you want to leave a message. But you can't call in live today. It's a special taped program. We'll be back live tomorrow with Becky Cinema. In the meantime, this program is sponsored by McHenry Protective Services. It's no wonder why the City of Fresno and so many Valley businesses choose McHenry Protective and Investigative Services. With over 50 years of experience in public safety and security, McHenry's team of experts will safeguard you, your commercial property, and your next big event. Professional service, marked patrol vehicles, 24-hour dispatch, and friendly, observant, and responsive armed and unarmed guards are just a few of the reasons you should contact McHenry at 559-478-7747 or visit them online at McHenryProtection.com. When you like Ventura TV Appliance on Facebook, it's nice. But when you love the Whirlpool appliances we deliver, it's even better. Our website is cool, and it's a good place to start. But you really should touch the merchandise before you buy. Touch the new Whirlpool Ice Collection. It offers a modern style made to create an inspiring kitchen experience. Save big on this Whirlpool Black Ice or White Ice Kitchen. Come in to Ventura TV Appliance and touch the merchandise today. Frigidaire. We introduce the first home freezer. The first pulsator agitator washer. And now we introduce the Frigidaire Orbit Clean Dishwasher, designed with a unique wash arm that gives you four times more water coverage for a consistently better clean. Frigidaire, over 90 years of legendary innovation. See the full line of Frigidaire appliances at Ventura TV Electronics and Appliances. A top secret location. It's the spies who love me, bringing together MeTV's top super spies to fight evil at a memorable moment's notice. They're daring. That's right. Free. Now what are we gonna do? The best we can. Swab. Does that apply to me, Oscar? Possibly. And smart? The yellow finger in the gun trick. Maxwell Smart. MeTV Fresno, channel 43.6 and Xfinity 187. I'm glad to be here, man. God is good, man. He made me uh, save travels. You got to thank God, man. Put God first, man. If you want to do anything in life, you have to put God first. No matter if you're Catholic and you... I did it wrong. Touch me, priest. Forgive me. Because I, I, I'm sorry about this. <laughs> hey, why'd you tell me?
imagine yourself and praying at the same time. I don't think I could be Catholic. <laughs> I have to be Baptist. I have to be Baptist. But um, anyway, God is good, and um, God brought me from uh, basically poverty to to the soup that my son wore the prom, and now I got it. <laughs> But he thought my money was gonna go to waste. <laughs> Especially I bought it with the gators. Oh, he was tripping. Them gators wasn't finna go get dusty. No, he ain't gonna have these shoes on Duck Dynasty. Not even close. So anyway, being broke and poor, this is where I started from. Some like some of us know. Food stamps, people. I started from knees. I started from knees, the real ones. I started right here. This is where I started from. Poor, bro. Couldn't go to the store and buy nothing unless you had the book. Poor people, bro. Then, 2014, I moved up to an EBT car. People, they can't tell me nothing. I'm home. I'm rich. I'm bald. Back in the program, of course, that was Punchlines and Pasta. You were looking at the comedian Antoine Johnson. And one comedian joining us now is John Hacker. Uh, are you a local guy, John? Uh, no, I'm from Bakersfield. You're from Bakersfield. Okay, yeah. so you at some point have participated in this Punchlines for Pasta. Tell mm -hmm. us what your, uh, you know, what. so what's your deal? Um, what's your main focus when you try to make people laugh? What, what do, you, do you do? You insult people? Yeah, I do what's a little your, bit of insulting. You do? Yeah, insult me. I want to Ins hear. It. I, I mean, it's hard. You you're just such me? a nice guy. No, it's I'm hard not. to do. I mean, no, you, you just do. Just ask the crew here. I'm not a nice guy. <laughs> He's not. All right. <laughs> no, I, I'm not really not. So go ahead and I, rip into me. <laughs> God, I wish I could. <laughs> I feel bad. You gotta, no, you have to think on your feet here. You have to think right. on your feet. So it, go ahead. I mean, you could use a shave. I mean, you just look like you've been up all night well, studying it's, a case. It's the old, uh, what is that, that five o'clock shadow? Yeah, you know I mean? yeah. So it's a dark, yeah. the Greek complexion, the dark beard, all that kind of stuff. So. Yeah, your face says, like, detective, but the way you speak, it's very news anchory. It is? Yeah. I don't, I don't do that on purpose. It just comes out. <laughs> I can't help it. <laughs> anyway, so, so how long have you been a comedian? Uh, almost two years now. Okay, and you're, yeah. you're how old? Uh, 23. You're only 23? Yeah. Well, give us some of your material. What's your material? Well, I, I, I like to give people advice. Like, uh, for example, you know, if you mix NyQuil and cocaine, you will lose custody of your children. So. <laughs> it goes it goes without saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just give people life advice. Um, I really talk about dating, that kind of stuff. You know, just a young. What about dating? Kid. Talk about dating. What's, what's well, up I, with that? I, I mean, they got. You date? Tinder, I, I try dating. I try oh, dating. Um, it, it goes awful every time for me. Uh, <laughs> kind of a self-destructive person. Uh, you know, I, I use Tinder. I don't know if you know what that is. I've heard of it. I uh, yeah, know. yeah. So I've you, never been on there. but you, you see a picture of someone's face, and then you kind of go, oh, I want to have sex with their face. And then if they also want to do the same, then you meet up and you do that. So that's so what Tinder is? That's what Tinder is, yeah. You meet up just for sex. I mean, not necessarily. You can try and go on dates, but it's probably it's, not going to go. I, it's I not going to go that way. Yeah, I had one girl. I, I picked her up, and uh, we go out, and we go to a pizza place because I'm poor. I'm thinking we can split a pizza, save some money. Dutch. You're yeah. Going Dutch? Yeah, I'm going Dutch on this on these dates. and uh, uh -huh. That's good. I, I start talking to her, and she goes, man, I can't wait for Christmas vacation. I'm so done getting up every morning for gym class. And I was like, oh, that's... Strange college students usually call it phys ed or something and I go weren't aren't you know college classes like a Monday Wednesday Tuesday Thursday and she goes Well, I don't go to college So oh. I had just yeah, I had just gone on a date with a 17 year old She tries to you know explain it away. Oh, I get, they wouldn't let me make us you know They wouldn't let me make a profile unless I said I was 21 and I was like yeah Because it's a site for people to have sex and meet up. It's not pedophilesplus.com Something right. totally different. I don't need to register as a sex offender after this date. Yeah. So, so what, in your opinion, what is comedy? What, 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 uh, what's the common denominator between, say, a good, uh, between all the good comedians, the ones that make people laugh? What's the common denominator, in your opinion? Yeah, I, I would say it would be confidence. Just straight confidence. No matter what you're doing, if you're doing self-deprecating humor, you're making fun of yourself. Be confident about your flaws. 
that's yeah. the that's the best i mean that's what makes all the good comedians yeah even if you're awkward yeah and to me i mean you can make fun of me all day it's not going to matter but, <laughs> um but do, so do you have to have thick skin have you ever been booed off the stage i haven't been booed off the stage uh i've been hit after a show before that's You've a, been like physically I've, I, yeah i've ha I had a woman By hit who? me uh this woman who did not like that i told her to stop talking in more colorful words during what? your performance during my performance yeah well, do you think you should have done that told her to stop talking yeah 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 why well she was being a heckler you gotta all right, but yeah. but all the good comedians at some point are right. heckled right so don't, don't you feel that like you have to kind of take that in stride like I, right I'm, sometimes i'm heckled here by the staff oh well let's take it in stride who cares yeah you can you can take it in stride but at a certain point you know it starts to derail from the rest of the show when this one person just keeps talking and you can't really do your material, you know, so at some point you just have to tell that person to shut their mouth. Yeah. And more, so she attacked you physically. Yeah, she yeah. She hit right me. right in the face. There, yeah, right? she hit me right in the face. She had a good, uh, she had <laughs> good a good right hook on her. Yeah. Right hook? Yeah, she had a good right hook. Uh, so what happened? <laughs> well, she was outside and uh, she was yelling at me and she's, you know, calling me all this, you're a shit, you're a crappy comedian. And her boyfriend gives me a high five and goes, you know what? You're actually pretty good. I like what you did, man. And then she, she told me I had a tiny dick at one point, which is weird. Cause I, you know, okay, it's, we can't, we can't. Oh, we can't. Here. Sorry. No, no, Sorry. I was is... trying to. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. So, uh, yeah, she made fun of me and, uh, just yelling at me and I turned my head and she just hit me right in the face. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. So um, I guess, uh, when was that, by the way? How long ago was that? Oh, that was uh, two months ago. Yeah. And you learned what from that? Nothing. You didn't learn a I thing? I didn't learn a thing. I just you, keep you, doing what I'm doing. You do <laughs> All right. Just remember, this is a family show. You yeah. Keep sorry. I'm trying to. <laughs> 436 Me TV Option 11. If you want to call in leave a message if you don't want to call in that's fine because you can't do it live today because it's a tape program here on connect with me on me tv fresno but our sponsor is glad to have them along McHenry protective services we're back with our i don't know i guess you could call it a comedy show here on connect with me in a moment it's no wonder why the city of Fresno and so many Valley businesses choose McHenry Protective and Investigative Services. With over 50 years of experience in public safety and security, McHenry's team of experts will safeguard you, your commercial property, and your next big event. Professional service, marked patrol vehicles, 24-hour dispatch, and friendly, observant, and responsive armed and unarmed guards are just a few of the reasons you should contact McHenry at 559-478-7747 or visit them online at McHenryProtection.com. Giddy up with westerns, we've got the best ones. Superhero sci-fi spin, grab the popcorn and stay in. Dramas, mystery, and action, take a look and see what happens. Carol, Andy, Lucy, Mash, timeless comedies full of laughs. Hey, that's me. That's me. That's me, Chief. Yeah, me, me, me. Me, 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 you gotta see. That's memorable, that's me. Me. Me, TV. All right, I want to play one more clip here from uh, Punchlines and Pasta, Cafe Via, Herndon, and Blackstone. You'll see uh, some of the same comedians or maybe some different ones on the 21st of January. Let's uh, take a look and a listen to Rogue Atlas. Uh, if I can have a superpower, what would it be? That's why I love to ask the crowd to interact with you guys. So I'm going to pick you randomly. I'm going to take like 30 seconds. If you could have a superpower, what would it be? You in the front. Invisible. Invisible. She wouldn't be invisible. Yeah. She don't want nobody to see her. That's okay. You're beautiful though. You don't need to be invisible. You need to, there need to be more of you. You ain't you here. Okay. Uh, if, who, hmm, if you could have a superpower. Well, you, don't turn around. I'm talking to you. I'll be up there. Oh, oh this is superpower becoming? Yeah. See, I like God right now. We're going to pay her tonight. We're going to pay her tonight. All right, let me do two more people. Two more people. Uh, if you could have a superpower, what would it be? <laughs> Is that what you mean? A superpower? Like strength, speed, to rob banks? Oh, you beat Rob. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm the best. To be strong. To be strong? Okay, strength is good. You can rock face with strength. Last person. Last person. I don't want to be racist. My man over here. What would your superpower be? Something like Wolverine. Wolverine? <laughs> 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 he said, I'm talking like Wolverine. 
was crossed up and healed instantly. Uh, my superpower would be the ability to control roaches. Because my neighbor, I live in an apartment and they like to play loud music. So what I want to do is tell all the roaches in the apartment to go get on all of their food so they won't be able to eat at night. That's, that's just what I'm saying. I think it'll be a fantastic power. All right, so that was a young comedian named uh, Rogue Atlas over at uh, Punchlines and Pasta. And so have you part participated in that event uh, here in Fresno before? Uh, not yet. I'm hoping to. Okay, not yeah. on the 21st, though, right? No, okay. I won't be there on the 21st. You're not going to be there on the 21st. No, no. But at some point you will be. Yes, yeah, yeah. This... And have you, you know about the event? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I just got in contact with Tim just a few days ago. So. Tim Cuckenbaker, yeah. yeah. He's like the organizer, the PR guy. The yeah, whole yeah. The boodle with him, right? Yeah, this whole the the whole thing is about rubbing elbows. Format? Is the format kind of conducive to what you do, or or not? Um, I'm I'm a little dirtier. Um, okay. You know, I just kind of yeah, like a yeah. Chris Rock on cable. Yeah, yeah, Chris Rock on cable, but maybe worse. Really? Uh, yeah, well, I, let's I keep it clean here. Yeah, though. yeah, <laughs> doing my best here. Uh, you know, I like to do uh, like musical comedy, that kind of stuff too. So, do you see fun. this thing as being uh, in your future? You're only 22, 23. So, do you, is this a is this like a career for you now? You're in it. You're yeah, in yeah, good? yeah. I'm in it. Really? I mean, even if I don't make it, I'm still going to be doing it. I mean, it's something that I've I love doing it. It's just love. I've I've never had something that I've had so much fun doing. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, good luck to you. We're going to bring on All the. Right. Uh, the third guest here on All Connect right. with me, and we'll talk to him about his take on comedy, and uh, you know, talk a little bit more about Cafe V on the punchlines and pasta. It takes place on January 21st here in Fresno. Connect with me, a tape program today. You can't call in live. You can call in and leave a message. Uh, McHenry Protective Services are sponsored today on the program. It's no wonder why the city of Fresno and so many Valley businesses choose McHenry Protective and Investigative Services. With over 50 years of experience in public safety and security, McHenry's team of experts will safeguard you, your commercial property, and your next big event. Professional service, marked patrol vehicles, 24-hour dispatch, and friendly, observant, and responsive armed and unarmed guards are just a few of the reasons you should contact McHenry at 559-478-7747 or visit them online at McHenryProtection.com. When you're looking for Whirlpool innovation and quality, who has the answers, the selection, the price? Ventura TV Appliance. With billions in nationwide appliance buying power, more than Home Depot and Best Buy combined will help you save. Our low prices on Energy Star qualified Whirlpool appliances save you energy and money and pay no interest on select models when paid in full within 12 months. Ventura TV Appliance, serving you since 1951. Unscramble. Sing, honey, sing. <laughs> call them classics, call them the best. Call them favorites, be a guest. Ah. Every day there's more to come. Watch and see, there's only one. Me. Me TV. Me. 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 That's memorable, that's me. That's me. <laughs> me, 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 you gotta see. That's memorable, that's me. Me, 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 me TV. When you like Ventura TV Appliance on Facebook, it's nice. But when you love the KitchenAid appliances we deliver, it's even better. Our website is cool, and it's a good place to start. But you really should touch the merchandise before you buy. Save big with KitchenAid. Right now, get up to a $1,000 prepaid MasterCard when you purchase select KitchenAid appliances. Get the best selection, price, and service in town without waiting. Come in to Ventura TV Appliance and touch the merchandise today. When you like Ventura TV Appliance on Facebook, it's nice. But when you love the KitchenAid appliances we deliver, it's even better. Our website is cool, and it's a good place to start. But you really should touch the merchandise before you buy. Save big with KitchenAid. Right now, get up to a $1,000 prepaid MasterCard when you purchase select KitchenAid appliances. Get the best selection, price, and service in town without waiting. Come in to Ventura TV Appliance and touch the merchandise today. Thank you. I'm a modern man, a man for the millennium, digital and smoke-free, a diversified multicultural postmodern deconstructionist, politically, anatomically, and ecologically incorrect. 
I've been uplinked and downloaded, I've been inputted and outsourced, I know the upside of downsizing, I know the downside of upgrading. I'm a high-tech lowlife, a cutting-edge, state-of-the-art, bi-coastal multitasker, and I can give you a gigabyte in a nanosecond. I'm new wave, but I'm old school, and my inner child is outward bound. I'm a hot-wired, heat-seeking, warm-hearted, cool customer, voice-activated and biodegradable. I interface with my database, my database is in cyberspace, so I'm interactive, I'm hyperactive, and from time to time, I'm radioactive. <laughs> Behind the eight ball, ahead of the curve, riding the wave, dodging the bullet, pushing the envelope. I'm on point, on task, on message, and off drugs. I got no need for coke and speed. I got no urge to binge and purge. I'm in the moment, on the edge, over the top, but under the radar. A high concept, low profile, medium range ballistic missionary. A streetwise smart bomb. A top gun bottom feeder. I wear power ties, I tell power lies, I take power naps, I run victory laps. I'm a totally ongoing, bigfoot slam dunk rainmaker with a proactive outreach. A raging workaholic. A working rageaholic. Out of rehab and in denial. Man, can you top that? No, I mean that's George Carlin. George Carlin's the <laughs> best, you know, one of the best that there ever was. So. I should introduce you now. You're comedian Dave Bro Sue, and you also partake in this, uh, you know, punchlines and pasta. Have you done it before or no? No, I'm actually booked um, in March to do it because I was already booked at something else for uh, February. Well, where do you? Where can we see you? What and what kind of material do you do? I, I do. I do a little bit of everything. I mean, I was just at UCSF and I spoke with the uh, faculty and staff of the nursing program. I did a combination of comedy and then motivational, inspirational speaking. Um, on the 20th of January, I'll be at Chichancy Casino, and this is airing on the 28th, correct? On the 28th, and you're appearing there when? I'm gonna, uh, on January 20th. And this, you're gonna be at Chichancy? At Chichancy, and then on the 28th of December, I'll be at Ventura Harbor Comedy Club. Okay, so do you, what's your act? You, you you insult people, or are you more like George no. Carlin? You don't insult <laughs> well, people. Well, Carlin what? was very structured. Carlin, um, you didn't heckle Carlin. Carlin didn't deviate <laughs> from script. Carlin was very precise about what he did. As a matter of fact, one of the guys that I that I work with down in L.A. <laughs> was friends with Carlin, and he was talking about Carlin knew before he ever even did a joke on stage that if it contained the six elements, he knew it was going to work with 98% certainty that he would get a laugh from it before he ever even did it in front of anybody. Very structured on how he What are it. the seven words you can't say on TV? Oh, I'm sorry, we can't say them. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so, but Carlin, I mean, Carlin was a guy... Carlin and Pryor were two of the guys that, that basically could, they took uh, and, and took situations and made them funny. Carlin's uh, mode, of, or mode of writing was he took everything that made him mad, and if it made him upset, that's what he uses the inspiration to write his material on. So that's why you see George Carlin, or you, we used to see him, he's on since passed, but uh, we used to see his act mainly be about anger he's angry at something if he got on a plane a train a bus something happened that ticked him off set him over the edge right it's a, it's it's situational on what caused the <coughs> response and if the response that he had was this frustrates me that's what he would use as his inspiration to write his material okay so there are people that insult there are people that use dirty jokes there are people that use anger uh, you can pretty much use anything right but how do you know if it's funny how do you know if it's going to work? Because it has to, for comedy to work, it can't be predictable. That's the first thing, okay? The, what makes something funny is the element of surprise. If there isn't that element there, it's not going to be funny. Bottom line, that's it. You've got to have, whether it's a misdirect or whether you're doing, you know, uh, what they call, you know, uh, uh, a pattern of three, the third item that you say on it has to be the funny one that doesn't fit in with the other two, but it has to have that element of surprise because that's what causes the, the laughter. Without that, you've just got somebody up there telling stories. What about a guy like uh, Rodney Dangerfield who insulted himself? Right. I mean, that was... You know, Why did that work? Well, self-deprecating humor is a big deal, okay? And Dangerfield also had the element of surprise. It, no matter who it is, it's whatever the punchline is, is what you didn't expect, and that's what makes it funny. I had the opportunity, I mean, I'm a student of comedy, okay? okay. Uh, I saw Dangerfield way back when. I saw Carlin, I saw Robin Williams. Um, I got to see a lot of the greats. I just went and saw Seinfeld. He was fantastic, you know, way better than I expected him to be. The thing that Carlin had and Robin Williams Williams had um, is they were both very similar is that their brains worked 
pretty much on the same level. Um, and that, that level was uh, high speed, quick witted, and nonstop. Well, Carlin was really scripted. Okay, Carlin. But he was, did you see that clip? Right. He was quick. Right, but he practiced and, that. But, I mean, it came out like it was natural, and it was quick, it was fast, it was, it was almost like rumble in the jungle, boom, 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 boom. Right. He's ripping it out uh, faster than you can even process it. Right. I mean, he's doing, he's doing a, his monologue. He's actually, yeah. he wrote that out verbatim, I guarantee you. Robin Williams was, was much more relied on improv. Robin Williams had Ad -lib. Uh, situations yeah. where, and if you look at it, if you look at like um, Live at the Met or Evening at the Met, whatever it was called, he does the same line in there that it's one of his, it's one of the lines that he ad-libbed in Good Morning Vietnam. And Robin Williams, you know, when you think a comic is doing a lot of ad lib with the audience or they're just bantering with the audience we've done the show so many times the audience is new the material is not it just who is going to be in there it's just like you've got this you, you've got this quiver full of arrows punch lines to work with and depending on what somebody says will depend on where you go and it's almost like an algorithm that you've got the response and then whatever they give you you either go here or you go here and you can dictate the direction that it goes based on where you lead the audience. So it's a skill to to be able to feel out the audience and know what direction you're going to go in. Well, absolutely. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I had a friend that that was talking with Ron White, and he said, she asked him, she goes, "How do you know your audience?" He goes, "I'm a storyteller. I tell long stories." He goes, "But I've got five short jokes that I'll do at the start of every show. Those five jokes will tell me, you know, I'll do one that's totally clean. I'll do one that's about my pets. I'll do one that's about sex. I'll do one that's dirty. I'll do one that's this." And he goes, "Depending on those jokes and what the biggest laugh is, that's how I know how to structure the rest of my show." What do you think about we got 2 minutes. What do you think about when you think about Johnny Carson, Bob Hope, Milton Berle? Johnny Carson was brilliant. Okay, Johnny Carson could take a show and you knew that it was you knew that it was a story, but he made it, you know, cuz everything that he did was day-to-day -day humor. I mean, he was doing he was doing current events. And so he would take the story and he would draw you in and you didn't see the punchline coming as opposed to Jay Leno that Jay Leno was more about performing for middle America. He didn't get too edgy. Carson would take it to the edge. Um Burl, you know, I read about Burl back in, he came up in vaudeville and then started doing the big clubs after that and then going on from there. Um, Burl was a notorious joke thief, okay? But Burl just had the one-liners and, and went Kind of like them. Rickles, Don Rickles. Rick, Rickles, insult comic, um, not so much known as a joke thief, but definitely... Uh, He's it's that crowd work, but again, he's done it so many times with other people that it seems like it's spontaneous and off the cuff, but he's done it before. It's yeah. new for who's ever common seen it. Common thread is there a common thread? The common thread is the element of surprise. Oh, it, that's with all of them. With all of them. I don't care yeah. who you're seeing, it, it has to have that element of surprise. Okay, so punchlines and pasta takes place at Cafe Via Hernan and Blackstone on January twenty first. You're gonna be there when? In February or in March. I'm not March. sure when the show is, but I've got okay. that because I've got I mean, I'll be at uh, like I said, I'll be at, at Ventura Harbor Comedy Club on the 20th. I'm at yeah. on the 20th. To Chansey. Uh, to Chansey on the 20th, Ventura Harbor on the 28th of December. And then I'm at the Ha Ha Cafe in Hollywood. And I've got some other shows down around L.A. Then I'm in the uh, San Jose uh, Comedy Competition. And I get invited okay. to the Redwood Comedy Festival. I'm all over the place. I'm having fun this year. Day Bro Suit. 17th my year. Thank you very much for coming on. All Thank right, you. We all need comedy in our lives because you know what? That's the medicine that heals us. I Absolutely. <laughs> it really does. All right, back with another edition of Connect With Me. We're back live with Becky Cinema tomorrow. She'll run down some of the movies and then uh, Peter Nazaridian on Friday. Thanks for being with us. McHenry Protective Services has sponsored our program today.